Okay, welcome everyone. Let's we'll start our lesson two. Today lesson will go through LO2 learning outcome two, which is about determine the strategic complexities associated with operating in the global environment. My name is Anjum and it's my email address. If you have any question, drop me email. Before starting this session, we'll recap what we learned during our last session. Uh, yes, Omar, do you remember anything what we learned during our last lesson, please? Uh, yeah, we learned about uh, about everything about uh, how uh, what, G what GBE is about global globalization, how the how company how organizations about increase. globalization. Yes. Yeah, the in uh, entry and exit into the, into a new country to uh, operate there. Okay. Yes, we learn about mode of entries. Yes. Yeah. Um, How we can enter into new market. We learn about culture. Yes. Yeah. The we uh, discuss the environment. The, drivers, always. the drivers of globalization. Yes, excellent. We discuss about drivers for globalization. Uh, digital implications on the environment. Sorry, which one? Uh, digital implications, the digital revolution. Uh, yes, digital implications. And yes, so we learn about the advantages and disadvantages of globalization. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And some forces, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's all we really we focus on these key points. Well done, great. Okay, today lesson will we'll go through further. What do you think? Scale one to ten. How much we know now? Uh, about a eight or a nine. Okay, good. Eight and nine. Okay, so today lesson is all about strategic complexity how the global strategic business is complex. Impact of international trade laws. What are the international trade laws? What impact can be? Economic, eco, economics of globalization and environment impacts globalization. Challenges to pose the risk, diversification strategies, clump, uh, complexities of international supply chain. That's all we'll go through to the lesson and all will be discussion over all discussion will meet these all our criteria and the key concepts. Okay, first thing, uh, of course, have we heard about INCO terms? Uh, yeah, I remember quite some time ago. So these are the INCO terms rule have become essential part of the daily language of the trade, which trade international trade. So they have been incorporated in the contract of the sales of goods worldwide and provide the rules and the guidance to the importer, exporter, liars, transporter, issuer, and the students of international trade. So XXW works. FCA, the free carriers. CPT is the carriage paid to CIP, this is all the term we use. Free on board, FOB, that's a lot we use. CFR, cost and the freight, and CIF, cost, insurance and freight. So this is all international and we need to be really, when we deal with the international trade, we have to understand because that's, you know, have a tariff implications huh? and the goods will be delivered or not. Okay, then. Any question, Omar? You okay? This, this? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. No, this okay. Is, I, I remember this. Okay, brilliant. Next, we need to be look around the strategy. So, as we know, the word strategy is derived from the Latin word strategist. Strategist, which is used in military, is a long term goal, objective of enterprise. So, course of action, allocation of resources in the strategic business and global is a huge impact. So, is carry on chaining things have a multi forces, really economics, political, economic, social. We have an international WTO laws. We need to look around World Trade Organization and various others. International transparency report also impact, you know, huge on the international trade. So these are all these 
So according to Henry Monsberg, the pattern in the stream of the decision, a long-term direction. So we need to look around as an organization. We, when we deal with it, look the mission, what yours, what we and what goals, what objective you want. You look around the strategic capabilities we have, what strategy, what business model and control, according to the global environment. Yes, that's not fit. So like last lesson, we discussed about ethnocentric, polycentric, geocentric, and regional centric strategies. So that can be, so that can be fit in this, which we already discussed in the previous lesson. Okay, international strategy framework we have. So internationalization drivers, market selections, where we do, which mode of entry, where the ge geographical advantages we have, near to port, yes, near to where the raw material available, where the free, you know, we can move it, where some is called industrial zone, where 0% tax uh, applies. So we need to be look around all these, huh? Okay, any question on this? No, no, no. Okay, next now, we have international strategy. International versus global strategy. International strategy refer to the range option for operating outside an organization, country of origin. Global strategy involved is a high coordination of extensive activities dispersed geographically in many countries around the world. Global strategy is just one kind of international strategy. That's we need to be look around. So any question? Uh, no. Okay, then we have internationalization drivers. So marquee drivers, if we have a similar customer needs in other part of the world, global customer, transferable marketing, we can look around the government drivers, trade policies, technical standard, host government, yes, policies, cost drivers, scale of e economies, yes, country specific differences, favorable logistics, competitive drivers, yes, interdependencies between the countries, competitors, global strategies, all we need to look around. Any question? Uh, no, no. Okay, that's you know we need to focus on. Okay, next we have location. Porter Diamond model explain why some location tend to be produced from with the sustainable competitive advantage. It's sustain. So four drive it in the Porter Diamond model. Local factor as condition. Local demand condition local related sporting industry, local strategy structure and revivery in the market. So this is the diamond model. We need to look around all these. Okay, then next we location advantages. Porter has mentioned in the diamond model, firm strategy and structure revivery, demand condition, related sporting industry, and the factor and the condition that create the competitive advantage which we discuss global sourcing. Yeah, that source of supply, that is a crucial in the success and the failure of any organization and thus we need to be focused. Any question? Uh, no, no. Okay. So global sourcing refer to the purchasing services component from the most appropriate supplier from around regardless of their location. Advantages can be cost advantage. Cost advantage include the labor cost, transportation, communication, taxation, investment. So unique local capabilities and national market characteristic, all we need to be look around. So that's, you know, we'll go which market we decide, depends. Yes, so we need to be look around the source. Okay, next we're looking the global local dilemma, which is meant by 
related to the extent to which product and the services may be standardized, which is fit across the national boundaries, or the need to be adopted to meet the requirement of the specific national markets. Any question? Oh, no. Okay, next we have international strategies, high and low coordination activities, global, multinational, your strategies, complex export are the simple export. So that's called concentrated and the disperse and configuration activities required. So thus we can use these strategies to go internationally and meet the market and to maximize our profit. So thus we need to be look around when we deal with the international business. These strategies we can use it. Okay, as we already discussed in the past, but we can relate when we're looking the strategic four elements of the pastel framework political environment variety between the country. That is a huge impact on the international trade. To the lesson, we also need to be look around. Economics, key competitors are the level of the gross domestic product, disposable income, which indicate the potential size of the market. A social factor like population, characteristic, lifestyle, as well as the cultural differences. Yes. Next, we need to look around the legal. Country varies widely in their legal regime. Yes, varies in the legal regime. That's all we need to look around. Okay, then we have the model is called cage model. When you decide which country you will go, we need to look around. You need to be compared the home and host country. Cultural distance. How much difference is UK and the Saudi Arabia culture? It's quite different, yes? yes? The legislations we need, the language we need to look around, norms, value, the way we lose life, yes? All is about the cultural. So cage cultural model, we can use it. What is the first is the culture. Second is administrative and political distance. Is a huge political distance. Yes. So then administrative distance, how controlled by this. We have a each organization separate watchdog as a regulator. Is there is what are the independent? Of course, there is Shura system. So we need to look around. Then Next G is a geographic distance. How far? Yes, locations. Then economics wealth distance. What is the economic wealth distance there between here and there? Per capita income in Saudi Arabia and per capita income in UK. UK per capita income is around 45, 46. Saudi is around 55. Of course, we're looking dividing into whole population per person eh? in dollars we comparing. Okay, that is difference there. So that's we need to be that will help us to decide which market will go and when will go. So that's the crucial things we need to look around. Okay. Then the next we have International cross culture. When we compare between US and China, so look around the what is it? This is called cultural web. Cross culture. So we can give them like a web. So risk taker. Is it in that culture how much people take the risk? Worldly, yes. Indirectly involved, self affecting, intra group competition or competitors, status conscious, which country is more status conscious than other. Yes, yeah, so this is represent the US and this represent the China, this color. And we can look around how from that, how much you're far or close to that point. Honesty, yes, or autonomy. So 
So these are we can use to compare various countries and that will help us to be better understand the culture and the model we can apply and strategically we can get you know advantage to be go abroad or not. Okay, we've been given is here less you know wine pour in the prior to the joining the World Trade Organization selling wine in China was difficult. But now is becoming not a difficult because the China is a part of the WTO. Chinese wine brand control over 60% of the wine market. Why the imported tariff on the Chinese wine, foreign wine were 65% and making it very difficult foreign wine to sell wine at the price that the Chinese consumer could afford. Although the wine making in China can be trace back over 8,000 years, the oldest in the world and alcoholic drink. So that's we, we can look around all and we can look around the strategic benefit, how much market, so what WTO are the laws that the tariff making different these. Have we heard about dumping and anti-dumping? Omar, have we heard about yeah. dumping and anti-dumping? Yes. Yeah, it's about flooding the market with cheap products, right? Inexpensive. Uh... So lower than the cost of production you're selling in other part of the world. You're dumping it, become, yes? So become, become and there are the laws against the dumping. It's called anti-dumping laws. You can't sell it less than the cost in other part of the world. But still some companies carry on doing or some countries practices. Huh? They are happy to be at the last few years but they want to kill other industries, other part of the world, yes, dominant, because of course it's a competition, okay. So then next we have in steps of economics integration. Strategically, we have created free areas, trade areas, no tax, trade barriers. Then it's become custom union, add uniform trade policies between countries. Then it's become common market, add free movement of labor, capital and technology. Then economics union add, you know, coordination of economics policies. And then is a monetary union like EU have the same currency. That's become monetary union. So these were first and the last level we can take countries into even single same currency, like in the Middle East countries can create like this. Yes. Okay. Then we have a GATT. GATT is general agreement on the trade tariffs, 45% to the less than 7%. The negotiation are known as a, we can negotiate. So during this time, world trade grew dramatically. The trade is likely entry of import wine China, companies into China, as shown in the preview of IB inside with that case reduce the tariff prompt and more company to see the opportunity to enter into foreign market this could compete on the equal footing with the domestic companies any question on this uh, no, no. okay that's we need to then we have when we deal method of payment in international trade so these are our letter of credit is most popular LC we used to be, but now, of course, credit card, debit card, the guarantees, bank hedging, these are all, you know, using in the international trade in purchasing. And so these were the method, lot of risk involved, but LCs reduce the risk, but you're paying the fees to the banks. Yes, are you open the accounts in other? These are all, so we need to be look around which one are high risk, low risk, and then we can decide which one is the best. It's not, no one is the hard and fast rule depends, yes? which one suits you, which one is your, your relationship with suppliers. Okay, then next we're looking now, distribution hidden costs and difference in the national distribution system may contribute to increase the cost in poor infrastructure, poor roads, warehouse, level within the distribution system, multi-tiered wholesale system, Retailer inefficiencies and ins insistence up to counter service, government restriction, laws pro yes, protecting 
small retailers lack of uh, retail storage space yes thus we can look around any question on this oh no no okay then we have a risk when we're looking this risk diagram when we do the cash in advance cash exporter importers have a different risk who is more benefit so we can make a decision which one is the best it's no hard and fast rule again we need to look around the situation and then we have a case about we can look around the case studies zara ikea and avon which i'll send you it's good to be read okay so please do so before next and i'll include in and uh, which is will help us to enhance our understanding in the international zara is quite popular their supply chain warehouse ikea is, i'm not sure is it ikea is in saudi arabia yeah it is yeah Yes, okay. Avon as well. Uh, no, I haven't. Insurance or cars as well. Huh? Rental uh, car. Okay, uh, especially beauty product. Well. Okay, strategic perspective. We're looking the reduce cost, reduce risk, improve supply chain, provide better goods and services, attract new market. That's all we need to be focused as a company. Then we're looking this planning and resource management. Facility location planning, where you want. Capacity planning, process planning, facility layout, fixed asset, global sourcing supply, all we need to be focused. Okay, then next we have an area is a value chain. You need to be think about how we can bring the value in the processes. Accelerating time into market, key pace in demanding consumer cannot be achieved through the operational efficiency. Uh, we need to look around how we can accelerate the product and services. Accelerate the product to market. Yes, TQM, we heard about. ISO, just-in-time inventory management system. That's we can look around. Okay. Then the supply chain management is crucial. You look around the distribution management. You look basic, simple product. You look the integrated, complex product. You look the skill complex product, contracted, standardized, and non customized product. Okay, the future trend third party logistic service provider. We need to look around the integrated global system tracking and control, consumer utility distribution. Okay. Then we have an evolution in 1980, but long history manufacturing, but no apply to the service all sectors. Yes, we need to look around the better, cheaper, and faster logistic, often used interchangeably, theoretical distance, bulk stock, transport costs, failing product prices, yes, falling and increasing. Transport, transport is a deregulized, yes, air. Rules all we need to be think about, and then we need to decide where is logistic improvement, bulk to the container shipping, faster transport, ICT information communication technology, economic dot continent. So we need to look around the distributions. All that will we need to be just in time supply chain revolutions. That all help us. Logistic coordination, complex operations. We need people, facilities, and supplies are the supply chain management network of organization we need goods and services increase our lab global supply chain globalization that is a crucial thing logistic and globalization foreign direct investment lean lean is producing have we learned a lean yeah. gale approach okay push yeah. and pull supply and the chain supply management all we need to be focused Okay, of course, MIS, these are all play the significant role and we have to carry on focus on. Okay, supply chain design, we need to be make sure the design meet the needs of the company. We need to reduce the risk. Yes, growing market competition integration. Okay, I copied the link for you to be further read supply chain. So that's we can copy and we can read. 
Okay, we have activity. In what does the supply chain affect your operational ma- as a manager? If you are, you can think about how could you improve your operation using supply chain principles. Creeping crisis, can you identify may affect your business in future? The crisis between the countries, you know, like a war between China and um, uh, U.S., especially, you know, the tariffs. Uh, we have some recommended. Further, we can look around logistic supply. By these authors is to be further enhanced, you know, our understanding and the supply chain side. Okay, key term technology as an enabler for the globalization. Advantages and diffusion. Global financial system we need to look around. Always that plays significant role in international trades and especially in the globalization. International capital market where we can trade. IMF is the national capital market, your library rate, exchange rate that is between banks that can play. London is known as a hub of these. Okay, then we can, we've been given the page and the cases which we, uh, I, last time I sent e-books to Roman and that book is already on Moodle as well. So that's the page yeah. being referenced. If you want to be for an exchange risk and various transaction risk, no real risk accounting currencies. Transaction, a potential risk contractual commitment and exchange fluctuation. Economic risk, a real risk, you know, real impact on the cost and the supply chain due to all these. Okay, then we have cash pooling. We can look around the cash management techniques that will help, you know, invoice discounting, internal bank, library rates. Uh, we can look around international trade financing and multinational within the book is the page numbers. We have international accounting and taxation we need to be focused. Economic point of view, operating management we need to think about. Challenges in operation and managers always need to be managed. And then we have a Porter Fire Forces. We discussed Porter Fire Forces before, so we are well aware of. Here we need to look around the globalization perspective. Okay, the Porter generic strategies we can apply in the international trade. Cost leadership, cost focus, differentiation and differentiation focus. In different markets, maybe we can apply to, con- to obtain the competitive advantage through this. Okay, the value chain, then Porter gave, that's we need to be really focused, supply chain. So these are the primary activities, and these are the supportive activities. So these need to be worked together to be bring the value in, in our organization, otherwise we can't, you know. Any question, Omar? Uh, no, no. Okay, then I copy the link for you to play a quiz, yes? Please go through as well. That will enhance your understanding, which is a crucial, you know. What you can do, you copy this link and play with it. Huh? Okay. Yeah. So that's, you know, was the key. Okay. So uh, I say here, we need to look around reading IKEA. Here on. And which other case was? Uh, come on, which case study was, uh, yes, uh, which clothing company? Zara. Uh, yes, sorry. I was recalling the name. Zara. So these are the cases you can, case studies. Huh? That's about the international trade, uh, international supply chain management. Okay, so we'll keep up to here. If you have any question, anyone. So today lesson, we discuss about supply chain. We discuss about globalization. We discuss about inco term. We discuss, you know, in operating in an international global environment, what sort of and what strategy. We discuss about cage model. We discuss about Porter Fire Forces. We discuss about Porter Value Chain. We discuss about Porter Generic Strategy. Those are... We can use it for international stage in the strategic perspective and the strategic mean the long term. And we need to look around the long term impact, political, economic, social environment can be our business. Okay, that's all today lesson and hope so speak to you all during our next lesson when we'll go through LO3. Thanks for attending and listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.